Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We have been working on this Gottlieb Masquerade pinball machine. I believe it's from the early 60s. Uh, the customer brought it to us and said that it was shocking him and that it wouldn't score and it wouldn't reset and it's just, it needs some work, right? So we did a video where we kind of looked over the whole thing, looked through it all, uh, kind of admired the back glass and the play field a little bit, and then we got to the point where it won't do much. So I'll show you what she's doing and then we're going to start cleaning some stuff and see if we can get it a little farther along. So it won't start whenever you try to hit the start button or anything. Nothing's going on. I don't have the schematics yet. We're waiting on those. So I'm not even sure if this left flipper on a Gottlieb will turn on the lights. I'm actually I'm starting to doubt if that even does anything because there's no extra switch up there. Um, so basically we're getting no lights on the play field or anything. If I go ahead and turn on or hold in the 115 volt hold relay and the 30 volt hold relay, we do get some action. But it just, the score motor constantly turns. Get some stuff going on back here. And if I turn on the 30 volt hold relay, it kills the lights up there, but turns on our play field. That's all we can get it to do. Now, we're in game mode right now though, so if I hit the flipper now, it's actually the play field's energized. Right? So it's limping along, but of course you can't start a game or play anything. So that's where we're at. I'm going to turn it off and unplug it, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this play field so that we can get down to the mech board a little bit better and clean some of this stuff. So we're unplugged. Got the play field out. Everything looks pretty good. It's just filthy, so I'm going to try to vacuum it up a little bit. I probably could have. I think whenever it starts, isn't the game over relay supposed to trip? We're missing some of our paper instructions, and without the schematics, it's hard to tell what's what. But I believe as soon as you turn it on, the game over relay or one of them trips, and it's not right now, so we've got issues, right? And the score motor shouldn't just continuously turn like that. So I'm going to get the vacuum cleaner and clean it, uh, some of this dust out the best I can, and then uh, I'm going to start cleaning through the relays, and basically just getting the dirt off of the contacts. Let's see how dirty the contacts are, okay? Let's see if this camera will show us. All right. Do you think that will conduct electricity? I don't think it will very well. Some of them probably are, but I bet a bunch of them aren't. Look how dark all those are. That one might be, that one might be. So we just got to clean that up. So I use a little file that's like very uh, kind of worn and nothing crazy. You don't want to like cut any metal off. You're just trying to clean off freaking dirt. Other people use polishing wheels and stuff like that. But to me, the file works the best. Some people use business cards. That's how they did it back in the day. They would take a little card and put it down in there. And then they would hold the two switches together and then pull the card through with the thought that it would clean up the dirt. Right? Well, that worked pretty good back in 1955 when the game wasn't very old, but it's got decades. It's got half of a uh, century of filth on it. So we got to get a little more aggressive, in my opinion. So I clean them with a little file. I don't, like, but like I said, you don't have, you don't want to go crazy because you don't want to file away the contact. Um, and basically, you just want everything if it's closed. So again, I don't have the schematics, but you can kind of tell what they're supposed to do. This switch here is closed right now. 
Well, when this bar comes around, it's going to open it. It's going to hit this, and the switch should open. So see how it's opening? So it should be closed and open. If it's like this, it's open, and then the bar hits it and it opens more. And then when the bar releases, it's, it's still open. Well, then that one's misadjusted, right? Or if it's like this, it's closed, and the bar hits it and it's still closed, and it never opens, well, then it's misadjusted. You need it to be closed and open back and forth. Now here's one that's open and when the bar hits this now it's closed. So it's it's reversing its state. It took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> I'm not bragging, I'm just saying that it took me personally a long time to figure that out. That but it's such a simple little concept. If you understand that, you don't really need the schematics until you're tracing down chasing down uh, specific uh, problems with it. But you can tell how a switch is supposed to work just by looking at it. Is it closed right now? Well, then it should open whenever the relay pulls in or the on this particular one when that bar hits it. If it's open, then it should close when it happens. As long as they change state, then that's how it's supposed to be. Okay. So I'm going to go through and check all of those and just clean some stuff and uh, See what I can figure out. See if I run into anything crazy. But I'm, I'm going to vacuum it first. So if I run into anything, I'll show you what popped up. All right, I've been cleaning through the switches. I want to show you the craziest switch ever on a pinball machine. On the bottom of the relay bank on these Gottlieb's, there is a sole switch that is really hard to adjust. Luckily, I don't have to adjust this one. But basically, what it does is it's open. If that little, if that relay has tripped or has not tripped, so the relay has not pulled in. When it pulls in, it closes that switch. Tricky stuff. Crazy. So let me show you on some schematics what that actually does. So this is off that masquerade that I was talking about. We had a, a, a Gottlieb masquerade a while back. This is the schematics for it. I don't have the schematics for Mayfair yet. I've ordered them, but they haven't came in yet. So that, that switch is right there. They call it the SB armature switch. The SB is the start relay. So... Basically, when the start relay pulls in, that switch will close. That's the start relay on that relay bank. So that switch will close. And then when the ball's played unit gets back to zero, and that one connects, and the motor gets to a certain spot, it makes the control bank reset. Um, so that if your control bank never resets, it could be that switch. It's very important, but very hard to adjust because it's un it's underneath everything. Okay, folks, so we're ready to put the play field back up in it and start working through some of it since we did all of the stuff down here. The only reason I took the play field out was because it was just physically blocking easy access to the relays. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So uh, I'm going through and cleaning the Jones plugs so they get filthy. Look at that. Ugh. So I'm shining them up with some sandpaper. That's how we do it. The inside you don't is the hardest to get to, but you don't really have to worry about it because where it plugs in, there's no metal that touches the inside. You can see, yeah. Whenever you do these, you got to remember to do all of these little adjustments too. You can see when the when you plug the plug in, it actually doesn't touch one side. It does touch three sides of it, though. Pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna do those. There are three connectors on the playfield, and then there's two in the back box that the mech board uh, connects to the the insert uh, panel on the back. Okay, folks, we got all the Jones plugs plugged back in, and uh, keep in mind, uh, I haven't turned it on since last time. <laughs> um, so I'm going through and just 
cleaning switches and checking things and just seeing if I've seen anything weird. One thing that I saw was these are the kickers and the switch up on the play field, which is these two, is what actually makes it kick. It's what shorts power to the coil to make it kick, right? But then when the coil pulls in, there is a bar down there that opens, that closes that switch. And so both of the kickers, that switch was misadjusted to where it didn't close when it came up. So I think I got both of them. And now I'm looking at this end of stroke switch on this flipper. This is real dangerous to do this. So when you hit the flipper button, this will pull in. Right? When this pulls in, this should open this switch. This switch sends power to uh, one of the coils on the flipper coil. There's two windings. So if you've got it like that, unfortunately what will happen is if you hold the button in, it'll just go and you're giving it full power the whole time through both uh, coils. Or I, actually, I think I've got that wrong. You've got it. Let's see if it opens. Mm, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, so, but anyway, whenever it opens, it's you, you need to lose one of those coils, one of those windings, like that. When it pulls in, it makes it weaker. What it actually is doing is it's adding the winding. Now that I think about it, so that's the winding is shorted out right now which makes it stronger because you're just using the strong winding. Well, whenever you open that short, now you're using both windings, basically making the wire much longer. Um, so it's less of a dead short and it doesn't, uh, it won't burn up. <laughs> so <laughs> having that misadjusted will tend to burn up your flipper coil if you hold the button in. So there's that. So I'm going to keep looking through and see what I run into. Okay, so they have these cool little stepper units on it um, that are, appear to be working great. So I cleaned off the rivets a little bit and then put a little bit of super lube on it. But to be honest, they were already stepping up just fine. They were just dirty. Look, I even lubed some things that it never touches. I don't even know what those are for yet. But guess what? We did get our schematics. Mm -hmm. I went through and replaced all the light bulbs. And cleaned the little inserts. This thing is on wheels. So I leaned on it. About went for a fantastic voyage. Um, cleaned these relays. Clean the pop bumpers, everything looked cool. Replaced, replaced all the light bulbs here in the middle. This thing is just so well built. It's just, it's cool the way they used to do them, you know. Overbuilt, kind of. Someone has put some electrical tape around that coil, so we'll keep our eye on that. It could just be that the paper came off or something. So what I want to do is, we have got our schematics in. There's two things I'd like to do. I want to see why that light bulb has a big resistor on it. And I want to, this one up here is really strange. There's just one light bulb with a resistor, but the other side doesn't have the resistor. So I don't know what that's all about. Um, but in the past I've seen that and usually whenever they've got those on there what it means is they're running that light bulb instead of running it off of the the six volts that the uh, Transformer puts out or I guess it's six volts something like that for the bulbs uh, It's running it off of the coil voltage the solenoid voltage and it's using that resistor to drop the voltage down so that the light bulb doesn't burn out um, I've even seen some where it took a special light bulb one that used more uh, more voltage so I've got the schematics in. Let's see why there are two big resistors on the play field. One over here near the um, push and pull coil that we looked at on the um, on the, the moving target. And then one up here, I guess on the coils that kick the ball out of the center of the play field there. So that's kind of weird. 
So I'm going to show you these schematics. These are from Gottlieb, though, and they uh, they do not like people making copies of their schematics. So read this. Reproduced under license from Gottlieb Development, LLC, Pelham, New York. Owner of the Gottlieb and D. Gottlieb and Company trademarks and related copyrights. So it was reproduced by Steve Young at the Pinball Resource. Okay. All of their schematics come from there. By the way, the Pinball Resource, fantastic company. That's where you get your stuff, people. If you need anything, get in touch with them. So I'm going to show you a little bit of these schematics, but I can't show you like every little piece of it or anything because they really get, uh, not the Pinball Resource, but the, the people that own the, uh, the, the, what do they call it? Trademarks and copyright. Um... One of the only ways they make any money is by selling reproduction parts and um, these um, copies of these schematics. They, without that company, uh, a lot of the stuff wouldn't be available. So, it eh, doesn't really bother me that you had to pay for them. And the thing is, they gave you, they one came with the machine, so it's not like... I don't know. It just I th a lot. Of, some people have a problem with it. I don't really have a problem with it. They gave you a copy of the schematics originally, <laughs> right? You don't have to pay for those. They came with the machine. But if you're missing yours and you want a reproduction copy of the schematics, that's what they make, and they're very nice. So it's a nice big sheet, right? Um, they just don't like there being copies floating around um, PDFs that you can download and stuff. So it's hard to find Gottlieb ones like that because the company doesn't like it at all. So if you need some schematics, you're talking, it's like 15 or 20 bucks. Just buy them from uh, Pinball Resource and then you've got a nice copy. I like the printed ones better anyway. It's easier to look through. So we're looking for our resistors. Now looking here at the uh, play field, I do see two resistors, but they don't look the same to me. So there is a there are two 470 ohm 10 watt resistors that attach to the balls played unit. That'll be in the back box, I would suppose. Um, but if I look up here just above it, it says bottom rollover lights. Okay, so they're connected in series. That's why there's only a resistor on one. So they are using this is the light bulb side of the transformer, and this is the um, coil side of the transformer, 25 volts. So they're using 25 volts to light up two 6 volt lights. Um, so they're using a resistor to lower that voltage. Now why would they do that? Why would they not just run it off the 6 volts? Well, because they want it to be on as long as the XY um, switch there is not open. What is XY? The red or yellow bonus relay, it says. So when the red or yellow bonus relay comes on, that switch will open and those lights will turn off. But until then, they want them on. <laughs> so I don't know. That's just how they wanted to do it for whatever reason. I'm sure there's a really good reason that they couldn't just run the 6 volts through that, that relay. Uh, and then light those individually. And let's find our other one here. Where is our other one? Where, oh, where is the other light bulb? Here it is. It's the double bonus light. It's got a 75 ohm 10 watt. The other one is a 62 ohm 10 watt, probably because they're running two bulbs on the other one. So on this one, they're only running one bulb, so they've got 25 volts running through it, and they run it through a 75 ohm 10 watt resistor that light will come on when you get to the 10th step of the red bonus unit and the 10th step of the yellow bonus unit. So that power coming through that, so when both of those get maxed out, it's going to make it possible to hit the left snap target switch, the right snap target switch, or for the XY relay, which is the red or yellow bonus relay again, to pull in, which will pull in, is that U? Relay U? Which is the double target value relay. And at the same time that that's possible, they want the double bonus light to 
be lit up. So basically, it looks like they're getting rid of a relay by doing that because they don't have to. Uh, they don't have to have a double bonus relay that comes on just to turn on the light. It can be on uh, whenever voltage is available to this U relay if one of those switches is it. So pretty cool. I like it. All right, so they're supposed to be there. It appears. So we've done all we can do just by eyeballing it on the uh, mech board and on the bottom of the play field. So we need to work in the back box just a little bit, but it's going to be pretty simple, I think. Uh, I already did the Jones plugs. They've been cleaned. And we have this 0 to 9 unit that the spider or the... the you know, I call it a spider if it's the, the actual legs that stick out. What do you call it if it's the board? The the wheel? I'm going to start calling it the pinwheel. The pinwheel has came off. Well, that's not that big of a deal, really. Um, there's a set screw. Two set screws. And there's a shaft. And they just came loose. You can take the whole thing off, but I never really do that. I usually take these three screws loose and leave that attached. But for some reason it's came off, so we're going to see if that thing will turn freely. Okay, I think it, maybe it's maxed out that way. What have we got here? Or maybe I'm wrong. Oop, so, you know, it might only move in one direction now that I think about it. drop this sucker down. Let's drop it down and see what's going on. Let's get right into it here. Let's see what's going on. Man, it doesn't want to cooperate, does it? Oh, the bell's in the way. Uh, we're going to need some light. Let's put some light on the subject. That probably won't fall. So when this pulls in, I don't know what I can't tell what's happening. Oh yeah, there we go. It's right there. That paw is skipping. Uh oh. Well, everything looks cool. I thought a tooth might have been broke. Why is that not? Got some stuff misadjusted here, people. I'm going to have to pull that out so we can see it a little better. All right. So I'll show you what it's doing, and then I'll show you why it's doing it. So when you pull the plunger in, it kind of cocks it, and then it's, it's slipping off of the tooth. But the reason that it's doing that is because the cog or the gear has slipped back because we don't have the piece on the front holding it in place so it's not actually supposed to be where it is it's supposed to be more like well if I can get it to do it can I get it to do it what, what did you do with my light people come on people I had it so precariously placed. That's more like it. So the wrong part was touching it. So now that makes a lot more sense. So the thing just wasn't held in place right because of that being off of it. I'm going to go ahead and take the plate off so we can mount that back on. All right, so I got it mounted back. Now it's gonna it's gonna ring the bell, people. If you don't like bells, don't watch pinball videos. You gotta remember the the plunger when it does it, it does it violently. But I'm violently hitting the uh, the uh, solder lug with my hand every time I do that. But if it violently does it, it rings the bell every time. 
So it's working exactly as intended. Now, whenever you do stuff like this, always be careful to leave a little play in it. You don't want it like cinched in as tight as possible because you're just creating friction where this touches the little bushing in there, you know? So you want it to have a little bit of play. This isn't some precise instrument, you know? It, <laughs> it, uh, if you get it real tight, it's not gonna spin properly. All right, so uh, next up, I'm gonna clean all these rivets. I just use a little bit of sandpaper. Other people use cleaning agents. You can use whatever you prefer. So cleaned up all of the rivets. Got them nice and shiny. Hopefully they'll conduct electricity. Then I put a very light layer of super lube on it. Grease so that it can um, uh, slide over the rivets very easily. It takes away a little more of the friction. We use this type. It needs to be dielectric so you don't burn the whole thing up. So get you some dielectric grease. You can probably get this at your hardware store. If you want to order it from us, we have a link on our website. You can go to lionsarcade.com. There's a parts page up at the top that we've got a bunch of links to some of our stuff on Amazon and stuff like that that we use in our videos. So uh, we like this. We're Lately we've been on a kick too where we're trying to notice where things come from where are the where what is the country of origin and the country of origin of this stuff is it is made in the united states this is good stuff none of that none of that china stuff here <laughs> at least in this instance um but yeah does it say it on here somewhere or does it just have the flag I looked it up. It's made in the United States. A lot of chemicals and stuff are made in the USA by a chemical company. Okay, so uh, yeah, check that out if you want on our website, lionsarcade.com. We've got a bunch of other things on there for sale too on Amazon. If you uh, follow those links on our website, it will take you to Amazon. And then anything you buy on Amazon after you follow that link, even if it's not what you clicked, it gives us a tip for sending you there. So if you go on there and you buy a Porsche, or like um, Jerry Lee Lewis said, a Porsche, a new Porsche car, it will give us a piece of that. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Okay, so uh, we need to clean the bottom of the carousel here. What's with that one? Why is it so long? I guess it's just the way the solder worked. Okay, so you clean the little snowshoes here. And then we're ready to mount it back on there. All right, so I've mounted it back, but loosely, so you can actually spin it to adjust it, right? And it's, you basically just want to line it up on a rivet. So you want it about like that, maybe. Let's see. So what I usually do is I, I got the wrong freaking screwdriver. I need a bigger one. I usually snug it down a little bit. And then work it a little bit and see if it seems like everything lines up. Let's see if another one comes around. Oh, here one comes. Here one comes, are you ready? You know, people, life can be exciting in any way you want it to be. <laughs> I wonder if the other ones line up. Oh, here one comes. Let's get ready. Yeah, it does line up. All right, so I think it lines up pretty good. Okay, so I'll snug the other ones down, and then that one's pretty ready to go. Now, this one's an easy one because it only goes one direction. It just, it, it, a true stepper unit, right? It doesn't reset. This one does reset. So it's going to be a little different, slightly different. Okay, so this one, two major, two main differences. So as it steps up, eventually it will get to a place. That's another thing. If you're just barely doing this like this, don't be surprised if the thing hangs and doesn't work right. But that's not how it actually works when you're playing it. It 
does it violently, like I was talking about earlier. So eventually it gets to a place where on this cog, this gear, there is a tooth missing. So that it can't advance past that. And that's how they control how many steps the thing has. So they only want it to go up to there. Assuming that this piece here is on properly, right? So if you look, um, boop, boop. this will be interesting trying to figure out if it's on properly. If you look, the um, you can see where the little shoes have landed. See they're on two rivets, and it's hard to see, but the one on the left. I mean, the one on the top is on the left. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten positions where it's actually on the rivets. Okay, so when it's all the way one direction, it's on the tenth set of rivets. It's kind of hard to see. We don't have enough light in there, but you get the point. It's on the tenth set of rivets when it's all the way up. Okay. Now when I push it the other way, boop, boop, boop. when I hit this, notice that this switch is closed and this one is open. But just barely, but it's open. And notice this post here. So when I, I tell the coil to reset it. Wow, it hit my hand, but you get the point. It has opened the one that was closed, and it has closed the one that was open. Now, is that correct? It's got to be, right? It was closed, now it's open. This one was open, now it's closed. That must be how they meant it. Okay, so it's went back to home position, and where are those rivets now? I can't tell. Are they on a rivet or off a rivet? Let's see how ambidextrous I am. <laughs> ambidextrous. How dexterous I am. Yeah, it is. It's on the first set of rivets. See it? So that seems right, doesn't it? It's on, it's on the first rivet when it's all the way back, and it's on the last rivet when it's all the way forward. So I would say that's probably correct. Now, if you look at the schematics that we were looking at earlier, you can see that it has a balls played unit, which is what we're messing with. And you see the little lines connecting the zero to zero? It's telling you in the home position, that's where it starts. So the little, I call them snowshoes, the little rivet, the little whatever, snowshoes, are touching the two rivets at zero. And then the 10th position, the actually number 9, because the first one's 0, but at the 10th position, it would still be doing something, right? It's still turning on the P relay. So that's how it should be. Sometimes you'll see them drawn where there's like a rivet before 0 or something, or 0 doesn't have a rivet or something. Um, but in this instance it's, instance, it's set up perfect where you've got 10 and it goes from 0 up to 9 um, as it moves. So it's... That thing, it appears to me, is definitely in the right place. All right, so same thing. Cleaned it up a little bit. Put some synthetic grease on it. And boy, she seems to move really good. I think that's good. I like it a lot. So next up, I'm going to clean the point relays, just like we did on the other ones. Go through them, clean the switches, make sure that they're closing or opening, whatever they aren't right now. <laughs> and uh, then all that leaves us really is the uh, replay unit, or do they call it a credit unit on Got, Got I can't remember. Replay unit, maybe. And the six score reels. All right, folks, so I didn't clean the score reels yet. I always wait till the last to do that. Um, but I've cleaned every else in the game. So let's see if it acts any different than it did previously. 
Oh, I forgot this one you can't turn on. There's no switch. <laughs> and the left flipper. Oh, yeah, we need to see. Let's look at the schematics and see if the left flipper button does anything on this one. I don't believe it actually does. I think I'm thinking of Williams and Valley games. Yeah, it looks like you just it's just the button. I need to hit the start button. You can turn it off with the anti-cheat switch and the shutoff switch and the bounce switch underneath it. But you have to turn it on with uh, a coin or the replay button. So I have a replay button. Let's see if we get anything. Nothing. After all that. Still nothing. We're plugged in. Hmm. Hmm. If the start relay hasn't dropped, and it hasn't, unless I left it that way. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so if the start relay hasn't pulled in, and you hit the replay button, which I cleaned the Jones plugs and everything, and if the motor is sitting in a home position, that switch will be closed. And if either the PB relay hasn't pulled in, which is the PB relay is the second player relay. So if the second player relay hasn't pulled in yet, which it shouldn't have, and the H relay hasn't pulled in, or either one, the H relay is the 30 volt hold relay, and it hasn't, remember? So it hasn't pulled in. So the normally closed switch on it must still be closed. And the W relay hasn't pulled in. Well, what's the W relay? That's the extra shoot relay. <laughs> No relays are pulled in right now. Um, and if you're not at the zero position on your replay unit, so that opens at the zero position, then it should send power to the E relay. The E relay will then hold itself on through that switch until that switch on the motor opens and it should start a bunch of stuff, right? And the motor score motor hmm the W relay or the B relay or the XY relay part of my hands I've been working you know or the XY relay or the K relay or the V relay or the mo uh, should turn itself on hmm well Looks like if I turn the coin, if I hit the coin switch, it should start it too. Let's try that. Same as it ever was. You think that that light would be coming on too? I like the other one better. Boy, it's going to be a colorful game, isn't it? Well, we're stuck. We're stuck halfway working, people. Could you even consider this halfway working? It's not even halfway working. We're stuck. It's pretty. Let's turn the lights off so we see how pretty it is as it sits here and runs and runs and runs. Boy, she looks good at least. It's a shame she doesn't work right. I wonder if I hit just that one and not that one. If we get anything different. Okay, I'm going to slap it, people, to turn it off. That's how. You, that's the approved method of turning it off. That's how you're supposed to turn it off. Kick switch. 
Okay, so I hit that first. Let's try this one. Nah, it's the same. It's the same, people. It had something to do with if I hit both of them, it lit everything up. Nah. It doesn't like something. The flippers work, though. So there you go. We're, uh... We're getting through it. I did all of that cleaning, and it didn't fix any of the problems. Preventative maintenance, though. Sometimes that's what you go through. Mm, mm, mm. So uh, we'll have to do another video where we figure out and start working through it. At least now that I've cleaned everything, I know it's. Uh, I don't have to specifically go through and mess with everything. I need to systematically work through it and find the... Uh, what all is not working so we'll do that on the next video so leave your comments below let us know what you think so far i think this is a cool little title and it's going to be really uh really awesome whenever we finally get her going which will probably be tomorrow it's, eh, it's kind of late i'm working late again huh oh man <laughs> um but hey at least we got it where whenever you hit the coin switch it starts uh it turns on some lights right that, that's that's much better than before i don't think it was doing that before <laughs> the start button doesn't do anything that ought to be our clue um if the start button isn't doing anything yeah we'll figure it out don't worry about it people so leave your comments below what do you think it is what do you think's wrong with it give me your clue and then if I haven't filmed the next video by the time I see your clue, maybe I'll figure it out. Somebody give me a clue on this one. But uh, in all seriousness, we'll get it next time. So leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We appreciate that. And make sure you check out my brother, Donnie. If you don't know about him, my brother has a channel here on YouTube as well. We do arcade games, pinball machines, and jukeboxes. My brother, Donnie, does old vehicles, old buildings. Uh, we're about to start a series on an old mobile home that we're working on. So that ought to be fun. So uh, we'll see you on the next video where uh, hopefully we'll get this sucker flipping.